Have you ever wondered what life would be like if you could move into a grand hotel full-time and have highly trained staff to cater to your every need? In this episode, we meet the dog who is living that life, and I'm not at all envious. Hello, I'm James Jacobson in Maui, Hawaii. And I'm Claire Mansell in Ottawa, Canada. Welcome to Dog Edition. Where voices from around the world consider all things dog. Dog Edition is the first show designed for you to listen to while you walk your dogs. In this episode, we hear the story of the assistance dog who didn't quite make the grade. But did fall into a life of luxury in Canada's capital city. Working dogs help humans in many areas of life, but less is known about the dogs who go through months and years of training and don't quite meet the high standards required to pass their final assessment. That sounds a bit like me at school. <laughs> I recently visited Ottawa's historic five-star hotel, the Fairmont Chateau Laurier, to meet a new member of the hospitality team. Stuart is our new colleague. And I say he's one of the most nicest colleagues. Stuart is very easygoing because no matter how uh, challenging your personality of, of anybody is, he found a way and everybody who has five minutes with Stuart, you can tell, they are glowing. So Stuart is definitely a, a huge plus in this hotel. <laughs> As you may have guessed from that very positive review from Maxime, the bell person, Stuart is no ordinary member of staff. Stuart is the Chateau Laurier's first official canine ambassador. In the Fairmont Hotel chain, only the general manager can decide that that particular hotel gets a dog. So Genevieve Dumas had to work her way up the corporate ladder for 15 years mm. before she could put her name on the list for her first canine colleague. Well, I've been with the company 26 years, and since day one, I wanted my hotel dog, and I had to wait until I became general manager at the Fairmont Chateau Montebello, which is about uh, 11 years ago. It took me all these years because my general managers didn't want a dog. I wanted one. as I was number two, so I couldn't because they said no. I ordered my dog, which we all take from the Canadian Guide Dogs for the Blind here in Manetic. Genevieve's first dog at Chateau Laurier's sister hotel in Quebec was Monty. And Monty was followed by Bello, who is happily living in semi-retirement, doing the occasional day at the hotel and living the rest of his time with her. When Genevieve moved to Ottawa at the end of 2021, coincidentally becoming the hotel's first female general manager, mm. she knew immediately what Canada's capital city needed was a hotel dog. That's what every hotel needs. <laughs> it's what every capital city needs too. So she put her name on the waiting list and that waiting list is quite long. We put our name down because we never know when we're going to get a dog. The train them, then they qualify them. If they fail, then they call you that we have a dog for you. So it could be months. Each hotel can list their requirements for a dog so that they can be matched with the right personality for the role. And depending on how specific the requirements are, this means that hotels can end up waiting a long, long time, a lot longer than, say, a family that's on the waiting list who just want a family pet. In the case of Stuart, it was a six-month wait to find a dog that was right for hotel work and also right for hotel work in Ottawa. Then out of the blue, one morning, there they are sitting in the office, the phone rings and they get a call and it says, can you take the dog today and see if he's a good match for the role? What an exciting call. She said, spend a weekend with him. See if, if it bonds, if, if it's the right dog for you. Because obviously a resort hotel and a city hotel, you don't want the dog to be going off, like walking in front of the main door and wandering in a city. So you need to be sure that they listen well. And so Stuart is perfect. He is perfect. Jesse Thornton is the manager of canine development at Canadian Guide Dogs for the Blind. And she says that they have a 70% success rate with dogs who go through the training, but some dogs are just more suited for other roles. 
We call them career change dogs. It can truthfully happen at any point throughout the process because the breeds that we do work with are very social breeds. They are often released for what we call positive dog distraction and it's just they want to be everybody's friend. In Stuart's example, he was career changed quite late in the process. Some of them, it really is just at the end when it is time for them to take on that full level of responsibility, that full ownership, making sure somebody's safe. Some of them can just say, you know what, this isn't for me. And they might start picking up little habits. Some of them will just suddenly, it's almost as if they've forgotten everything they've been trained. So they do let us know in their own way, 100% that, hey, this isn't for me. And that's perfectly fine. We're not gonna force them to do something that they don't want to do. They are such a lovely team at the Canadian Guide Dogs for the Blind. And I love the fact that they must pour so much money and time into these dogs. But if at the end they're not suited to it, they say, yeah, that's fine. If you want to go and work in a hotel instead, we're not going to force you. So Jessie dropped Stuart off herself at the hotel and she knew right away that he was going to get on fine in his new home. He's a giant extrovert. And from the moment I pulled up with him, he sort of walked into the lobby like, hello, I'm here. I am the king of this castle now. Welcome. I bet he was very happy to get there. Career change guide dogs are well suited to working with the public, of course. And they're generally calm and good with people. And of course, yeah, there's that benefit. They're very well trained. We know that they're trained. We know that they're going to be nice with guests and all of that. So it's like an, a guarantee for us that we have respectable dog. And Stuart is just the most adorable dog. He says hi to everybody, but he's not too pushy. He's kind of respecting people's uh, a limit if they do, but he, he's a sweetheart. He's adorable. He's a, you know, cuddler. He's a licker. He's a kisser. He gives kisses. He's, he's adorable. People love him. Every time I hear that bit of audio, it just makes me smile. It's just a wonderful description of that dog. So as you might have guessed, Stuart's main role in the hotel is greeting guests, which I think he probably does very, very well, and enhancing the kind of home-from-home experience for pet owners. Now, you've met Stuart. I mean, you, you, how did he greet you? <laughs> he is one of those dogs who, you know when they wag their tails, the whole body wags? Yeah. So he's like a really enthusiastic greeter, but also <laughs> really well-behaved, so he doesn't jump up on people, but he just really lets you know that he's pleased to see you. So he doesn't intimidate guests who are like, oh, I don't like dogs, I'm a cat person. He knows his way. Yeah, he is a dog who, if I can use this word, he sachets through the reception mm. area. Very appropriate for the hotel, it sounds like. <laughs> so he wanders freely around the offices and public spaces during the day, and he just goes around making new friends and spreading that kind of doggy good vibe. Come on, Stuart. Come on, buddy. Hi, buddy. Oh, hello, Stuart. As soon as we walk in, he will go to various department and people. He will stay at front desk. He's got a couch there so he can greet the guests. He will follow me all around the hotel and people pet him. And then he will go uh, for walks with, not with the guests, yes, because I, I want to make sure that he's not going to go off leash or, or walk in the city, but he, he goes around pretty much with the, the team. So as Genevieve says, Stuart doesn't currently go for walks with guests, but do dogs at other hotels walk with guests? Yeah, this is the amazing thing. This is one of the facts that I uncovered at the hotel. There is a dog called Bear, who is the canine ambassador at the Bam Springs Hotel. Another hotel. Yeah, yeah, another hotel. And guests who turn up there during the summer months can kind of book bear out they can you know get a slot in his very busy work schedule and they can take him for walks and hikes in alberta's provincial park i love that that's awesome so in fact there are dogs at the fairmonts all over canada there's one in jasper there's one at lake louise and in vancouver they have topped everybody because they've got two dogs two dogs yeah i don't quite know how they managed to wangle that but they have they're smaller so maybe it's on capacity <laughs> that's awesome well when Stuart is not greeting guests at the front desk Stuart likes to hang out on his custom made bed in one of the largest plushest offices in the hotel and Genevieve has found a noticeable increase in visitors to that room well, actually, there's a lot of people coming in my office because they know that Stuart is here. They want to meet the dog. And my assistant always says that there's more people coming to see the dog than they come and see you. <laughs> He's most popular than, than me. Genevieve makes an effort to ensure that Stuart doesn't become 
too attached to her, which is what happened to Bello, the dog, at her last hotel. Mm. If she were to change jobs for any reason, then Stuart wouldn't come with her because he belongs to the hotel. I spent a week with him, but when I arrive at the hotel, I try to let him stay with various departments. He will spend time in the sales office, just so he doesn't get used to me and only me because that's what happened obviously with my previous dog. So I talk about experience. <laughs> so he needs to be a hotel dog. So as part of Genevieve's effort to ensure that Stuart spends time with several people, he is co-parented. He's co-parented by Patrick Winslet, who's the director of rooms at the hotel. And Patrick takes Stuart home on weekends to socialize with his two dogs, who's a Jack Russell and a Dutch Shepherd. Loving as many dogs as I can, I agree to be co-parenting. So with Genevieve, I do take him on the weekends. I bring him home and have a big yard, fence yard, so he's free to roam around and run as much as we want with my two other dogs that I have at home. During the week, Patrick is also there to step into the role of Fun dad when required. <laughs> fun dad. Disney dad. Fun dad. <laughs> yeah. I like personally like to go in the lobby with the tennis ball that we have. And I look around, make sure there's not too many people. And then I just throw it and he just runs around and goes for it. So it's uh, we usually do a couple of trope just to get him going. And he, he just loves it. And guests love seeing that, right? It's They love, first of all, a lot of guests do love the puppy. So it's, it's a big engagement. So is this like a big lobby where you could actually throw a tennis ball? Yeah, and I have video footage of this and we will share it on our social media because I couldn't quite believe that they would really throw a tennis ball through this five-star hotel, but they do. Okay, I want to say, so there's a link in today's show notes where you can watch that video. Now, can Stuart go everywhere in the hotel? Well, I wanted to know this as well. He's not allowed into the kitchen, so he can't get leftovers or treats, you know, no caviar for Stuart. <laughs> um, he's not allowed into the hotel's 18-meter Art Deco pool either, so no dock diving for him. Well, I understand the pool part, but I think that the food part must be really hard for him. Yeah, can you imagine spending your days in a luxury hotel, award-winning restaurants, smelling that food? food all the time and he's a Labrador and we know how much Labradors love food <laughs> and so it has presented a few challenges. I'm trying to train him because usually they understand very well. We tell them to sit in front of the restaurant and then I can go in the restaurant. He would wait. He doesn't. <laughs> so I still got a lot of training to do. He smells the food and he goes crazy. <laughs> Ah, I understand that temptation. No matter how well-trained these career change pups are, sometimes they're just mischievous dogs who like to do their own thing. One little fun story. We have one at Jasper Park Lodge, and one of my friends was actually staying at the hotel, and she sent me a picture of him, and he was laying on the coffee table. So I text his owner, who works at Jasper, and I was like, since when has he been doing this? And he's like, oh yeah, that's his new spot to lie, and none of us tell him he can't do it. I was like, he did not learn that when he was with us. Like, oh my God, so people walk in this hotel now, and there he is on the coffee table, just looking at them, like, welcome. Oh my goodness. Jessie from the Canadian Guide Dogs for the Blind, and she's got some great stories about the dogs. So Stuart's been in his canine ambassador role since the beginning of May. He hasn't been taking naps on coffee tables yet. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> but he did settle in straight away, and everyone agrees that he's been a brilliant addition to the team. Stephanie Trottier is the PR director for the hotel. It's really good for the guests. They are super happy, like my colleague said, Patrick, but also for the employees. Are you walking with... Stuart, the employees are stopping, they're petting them. And it's actually a relief in their day and moment that they are not thinking about anything else. So he brings joys in the team. We say it's already part of the family, so it's great. Genevieve agrees with Stephanie and says that Stuart's arrival has been incredibly positive for everyone. People love it and the staff love him. I think it brings such peace and... I don't know. I bring him to the cafeteria and the employees go crazy just seeing the dog. So I think it's it's all positive. So we can go to the cafeteria, but just not to the public restaurants. I like that. Exactly. So I noticed that bit. Not the five-star restaurants, <laughs> but we can take you into the staff canteen. That's great. <laughs> Jesse from the Canadian Guide Dogs for the Blind thinks that although these career change dogs might not have achieved what they originally set out to do, they do have rather good lives. Hmm. They're all spoiled, all of them. They're just living their best lives. So uh, 
it's a great partnership. It's I always joke with people, if I can come back in my next life as a Fairmont Canine Ambassador, I'm good. Like, that's all I need. <laughs> Living your best life. That's awesome. We are going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we'll discuss other dogs in other hotels around the world. And now, a message from your dog. Oh, every day with you is like a day at the beach. And I want as many beach days as possible. Oh, I want to run. I want to sniff. Ooh, I want to find a good stick to carry. Oh, I want to roll in the grass. Oh, and warm my belly in the sun. Oh, I want to walk with you, run with you, sleep with you, eat with you. And when I eat with you, I want ever pop. The green, glassy beef liver smell wakes my senses. Oh, you may not realize this, but it tastes like homemade gravy. It infuses any food you give me with healthy life vibrancy. Oh, I can feel it. Ever pop traveling to every cell in my body, nourishing each one. I'm so grateful to be your dog and for the ever pop you give me. So now that you know what your dog wants, get Everpup, the ultimate dog supplement. Everpup is available in select pet shops and on Amazon. But to get the best price possible, join the Everpup Club at everpupclub.com, where you'll get your first jar for just $8 with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Go to everpupclub.com and use the discount code DPN. That is everpupclub.com. Everpup, every day. Welcome back to Dog Edition. Now, one thing I didn't manage to squeeze in when we were doing that report, Jim, that I found fascinating is how the training for the guide dogs has been affected by COVID. So Stuart is four, and normally it takes them two years to go through the training. And so normally they would be a maximum of two years old when they go for the career change. But Stuart took four years to go through the process Mm -hmm. and then got career swapped because they've had to delay so many things like the going on public transport and stuff because of the restrictions. Mm -hmm. So uh, he took a little bit longer to to find his vocation in life. And people are like that too sometimes. Sometimes people just know it right off. And then sometimes people are late bloomers, but it sounds like he's found his perfect vocation. Yeah, absolutely. And also you can stay at the Chateau Laurier with your own dog if you want to. And they treat them so well. I love hotels that let you bring dogs. There is a hotel on an island across from our island, on a little island called Anai, and they very much welcome our dogs. We had a dog who went to our wedding there, and they always make the bed appropriately and put treats and water bowls. And it's a nice thing. They know how to pamper your pooch as well as you. I think they know that the way to the owner's heart is through their dog as well. You know, if they treat the dog well, then the owner's going to go away and go, yeah, that was a brilliant hotel. They looked after my dog. <laughs> it's my baby. It's my baby. So, yeah, they, they get a bed. You know, I was saying that Stuart has the custom-made bed in the office. Mm-hmm. They have one like that, and it's all sort of embroidered with Chateau Laurier on it, and it's beautiful. It's like gold thread on it and everything. And the other thing I should say, and I feel a little bit disloyal, to Patrick saying this, but obviously Genevieve has the best office in the hotel because she's the general manager, right? You know, that makes sense. And Patrick has a less good office, I think it's fair to say. And he sometimes tries to get Stuart to come into his office. Certainly when I was there, he was like trying to pull (laughs) Stuart through and Stuart's like, hmm. Yeah, I've seen your office. <laughs> Stuart has become a, quite a hotel snob, it sounds like. Yeah, exactly. I'll take the one with the big glass wall and the plush <laughs> beds and, you know, the <laughs> acres of space. These standards have gone through the roof. So other than Stuart, have you ever like actually stayed in a hotel that had a resident animal on its staff? Well, it's interesting because while I was kind of looking into Stuart's background and the whole hotel dogs and things, I discovered that not only is it not unique, there are other dogs in hotels and particularly in like B&Bs, obviously, mm-hmm. but there are all sorts of other other animals. And there's there's a hotel in New York that's got a resident cat called Hamlet, and they've actually had cats since 1986, resident cats, and they've all been called either Hamlet or Matilda. They run out of names. <laughs> well, now that you talk about cats, I guess that hotel that I was mentioning over in Lanai, 
does have cats that sort of do have bowls in the lobby and on the railings outside the hotel. So I guess they would be considered very happy cats who live a hotel life because I have seen them put some morsels of tuna in their bowl. So yeah, I guess I, I guess I've seen that. So if you know of a hotel dog, let us know because we'd like to share that with other people because I think it's always fun when you're away from home and you don't have your dog with you to be able to spend some time with Stuart or another dog like that. So let us know. You can contact us through our website at dogedition.com. That's about all the time we have for today's episode. And if you enjoyed the episode today, don't forget that, as we mentioned earlier, check out the show notes because you can see Stuart on our social media, including some video footage of him hanging out in the hotel and playing ball in the lobby, which is amazing. And there's a picture of me with him on that luxurious bed that he has as well in the plush Mm. office. The plush bed. It's worth checking out. Again, there's a link in today's show notes. Please follow us in your favorite podcast app or get us on YouTube. And if you enjoyed today's show, do us all a favor. Tell a friend about Dog Edition because it is, of course, the world's first podcast designed to listen to while you walk your dogs. You can find out about all the shows on Dog Podcast Network by visiting the network's website at dogpodcastnetwork.com. I'm Claire Mansell in Ottawa, Canada. And I'm James Jacobson in Maui, Hawaii. On behalf of all of us here at Dog Podcast Network, I'd like to wish you and your dog a very warm aloha. Aloha.